three. I'm going to get you guys, because we don't have much time, I'm going to get you time to turn to Ephesians chapter 2. I'll get you guys to go to Ephesians chapter 2, and we'll get there eventually. But the passage that I was given was Joshua 23 verse 3. It says, And ye have seen all that the Lord your God have done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. Now these are the words of Joshua. And if you know who Joshua was, he was the one that led the Israelites into the land of Canaan. Okay, into the promised land. And as he went into that land, Joshua fought many battles. Hey, Joshua was a man of war, wasn't he? And these words that he spoke, I'm going to give a little bit more context. I'm going to go to verse number one. These are words he spoke at his old age. These were words that he spoke um, toward the end of his life. Verse number one, it says, And it came to pass a long time after that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about, that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. And Joshua called for all Israel and for their, le- for their elders and for their heads, and for their judges and for their officers, and said unto them, I am old and stricken in age. So he gets all of Israel together and says, look, I'm old, but there's something I want to communicate to you. There's something I want you to know, and that's verse number three. And ye have seen all that the Lord your God have done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that have fought for you. And look, let me tell you something. Yes, we're not of Old Testament Israel, but we are the children of God. We are in that new covenant with Jesus Christ. And this same promise is given to us, hey, that if we're in the will of God, if we're serving God, we're keeping His commandments, we're His children, He will fight our battles. He will fight our wars. What a great promise to know that the God of the universe can fight the wars for us. Say, why did Joshua have such a strong, uh, you know, uh, belief in in God? Well, this, this, um, this teaching goes all the way back to the books of Moses, okay? And I'm just going to read to you from Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1. And this is obviously being spoken to Old Testament Israel after coming out of Egypt. It says, When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots and a people more than you, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Hey, so what God says, look, when we're facing our, our problems, when we're facing our warfare, our fights, when we need to soldier on for the Lord, even when it seems like we're outnumbered, even when it seems like our enemies are more than what we are, the promise is that God will fight for us, okay? And, and then verse number two, And it shall be when ye are come nigh unto battle, so as you approach the battle, this is what was meant to happen, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people, you see, one of the responsibilities of the preach of the priest in this time was to preach, was to edify the saints, kind of like a preacher today, like a like a pastor today. And look, if we're ever as a church going into battle, you need to hear words of encouragement from the preacher. And what was the priest meant to say? It's already read, it's already here for him. Verse number three, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, you approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not. And do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. You see, God does not want us to be afraid. He doesn't want us to be fearful. He doesn't want us to tremble in the day of battle. And you say, well, you know, what about us? What kind of battles do we have to face? You know, are we going to war? Are we going to fight for, you know, you know uh, the nation of Australia or something like that? No, that's not a requirement for us as a believer. But even so, we are required to prepare for the battle. And we're going to go through that now. Okay, but let me just read this to you. Because you might think, well, if God will fight all my battles, do I have to prepare? Do I have to fight if God's going to do it for me? And Proverbs 21 verse 31 says, The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. You see, you still have to prepare your horses. You still have to prepare yourself and your armies for the battles to be had but safety is of the Lord, okay? The protection, the victories, you must remember, will come from the Lord, all right? So let me just explain two things for you. How can you prepare? You can prepare in two ways. Number one is to know your enemies. Now, you guys are in Ephesians 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Let's see who your enemies are for you to fight your battles. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you have he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. Notice that. According to the course of this world, 
according to, notice the next one, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Let's keep reading. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, look at the next one, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind that were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You see, Ephesians chapter 2, and if you're familiar with Ephesians chapter 6, it talks about the armor of God, and we're going to look at that shortly. But Ephesians chapter 2 starts off by telling us who our enemy is, who are we fighting against. And the three enemies that we saw in this passage was number one, the world. Okay, Number two was the prince of the power of the air. Okay, That is Satan. And then in verse number three, it said the lusts of our flesh. Okay, The lusts of our flesh. So we have three enemies, guys, as believers. The world, Satan, okay, and your own flesh. And sometimes as believers, yeah, we look at the world, we go, wow, the world is so wicked. You know, we need to fight against that. And we, then we, know, we see the forces of Satan. We know that Satan at the end of the day is pulling the strings of this wicked world. We say, we've got to fight against Satan. But one thing we often forget as believers is that the, there's a war within our flesh. There's a war within our bodies. And we know what that is. It's the new man versus the old man. Hey, that flesh is, is against the Lord, is against the Word of God, is against following the commandments of God. So you need to have victory. But you need to remember the words of Joshua. The only way you can have victory is by knowing that the Lord is fighting for you. Okay? The Lord is fighting for you. And the reason Joshua wants Israel to remember this is because they've had so many battles. And when you have many victories, you might be tempted to think the reason you have victory is because you're such a great person. Okay? You might be filled up with pride and you're filled up with, man, I'm such a great warrior. But no, you've got to be, you need to remember the reason you have victories is because the Lord will fight for His children. All right? Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. How else can we prepare? Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11. Of course, I had to turn here, okay, in a passage, in a, in a passage like this. But we need to make sure we put on the whole armor of God. You see, we need to prepare ourselves. We know who our enemies are. We know that God gives us the victory. But you see that victory is given by God, and it's seen here as the whole armor of God. God gives us the ability to have victory. He gives us His armor. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, it says, Put on the whole armor of God. Hey, not just parts of the armor, not just one shield, not just the helmet. No, the whole armor of God is necessary for you to win your battles, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Hey, how do we fight? We need to have the truth. We need to be righteous. Okay, We need to be walking in the righteousness of God. Verse 15, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of, pre of peace. Hey, we need to be preaching the gospel. That's part of wearing the armor of God. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith. Hey, we need to have faith that our Lord will come through, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation. Hey, the only way you can fight these spiritual battles is by remembering that you're saved, by, by being saved, remembering that God has given you victory over all anyway. And then it says, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, Hey, you need to know the Word of God. You need to memorize the Word of God. You need to use the Word of God like a weapon to fight against the enemies that we all have. All right? Now, I better wrap it up soon. I've got less than a minute. And I'm going to conclude on this, guys, because I'll just read it to you. 1 Corinthians 15, 56. It says, The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, look at this, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, it's Jesus Christ that has given us our victory over sin, over, over eternal death. And then it says, therefore, my beloved brethren, so because we have victory, it says, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for so much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You see, this, I just want to end on, the, on this statement that my old pastor used to say all the time. And it, it's absolutely true. It's, hey, we don't fight for victory. We're not going to fight 
for victory, we've already been given victory by the Lord. When we go out in battle, we fight from victory. It's Christ that has already given us victory over this spiritual warfare that we face. And we need to make sure that when we fight, we fight from the victory that God has given us. Let's pray.